beloved brothers and sisters in Christ. Yes, today we are coming live to you, Ecclesia Ministries, on the topic, Hope the Anchor for Our Souls. We are continuing today, uh, as always, to discuss what is this hope, the anchor of our soul. And today we are ministering on the agape love of God and how to abide in this agape love of God. God wants us to remain in His love, to stay in His love, and to rest in His love. Stay tuned as we unpack it further and also how we teach each other how to, to remain in this abiding love. John 15 verse 1 to 7 is our key scriptures. In Jesus' name, Amen. I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God is good. God is good. God is great. Amen. We spoke about hope, the anchor of our soul, the couple of weeks. And the people that were not here, you can get the notes. There's DVDs available. And we said that faith, 1 Corinthians 13 verse 13 said that faith, now faith, hope, and love abides. But the greatest of them all is love. And last week we spoke about the, the, the agape love of God. And we said that faith is only believing God's promises, but hope is trusting in His promises and that God is faithful that whatever He's promised, He will basically fulfill through His love. Love is the fulfillment of the promise. Love is the fulfillment of the promise. When we get from our faith to the ultimate hope, to, uh, to, to hope, which is the bridge, and then to love. And then we saw that this agape love is a supernatural love. It is not a human love. This agape love gets poured into our hearts the minute we say yes to Jesus. And the agape love is a person. It's not an emotion. It's not a feeling. Yes, sir. 1 John 4 verse 7 to 8, we, we say that Jesus is love. The identity is Jesus. He is love, the supreme thing. And then we also spoke about that the agape love cannot be given by a human being. The agape love is, needs a clean vessel to flow through. Because God can only love through us to a next person. We cannot have that supernatural love because if, if we don't allow the Holy Spirit to love through us, then we can't do it in our normal human condition because we don't know how to love that way. We don't know how to love that way. So we spoke about the agape, the supernatural love. And you remember I mentioned to you there's other loves as well. There's the stogie love, then there's the, the human love has got three. The phileo, the eros, and the... Um, there's another one. I'll get to it, but we'll get to it next week. Today, we, we wa I want to talk about there is six reasons why it is important for us to know God's love. There are six reasons that this agape love is so important to us. The six reasons that I, that I want to share to you guys today, and I want to mention it quickly, and then I want to speak about the abiding love. And I want to focus on the abiding love this morning. Why is God's love so important? Because it gives us meaning and purpose for our lives. That's the first one. Right? And like I said, the two greatest commandments is to love Him first. And that's why then we can love others. But if we don't understand to love Him first, then everything else, we can't love others. And that's why we always hear people asking, pray for our marriages. Mm. Pray for our children or pray for me. You understand? Because God said that you've lost your first love. You understand? In the Bible in Revelation, God says, I've got this against you, that you've lost your first love. Mm. The first love means to love him first. And then when we love Him first, it is easy to love others, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Because we cannot just love others without 
Him, the love in us. That's the first point, meaning and the purpose of our lives. The second one is, how will people know about Jesus if the love of their agape love is not in us? How will they know us? If we want to, uh, yesterday I mentioned on the Great Commission, I was taught at a very young age, that's why Keith was saying, there's a lot of stuff that we need to unlearn. Because they were t- teaching us that when you, are get, when you get persecuted for the gospel, nah, you must turn your other cheek, isn't it? Mar, I see you only persecuted for the gospel, then you must, but then that, it was, that was wrong, be- wrong teaching creates wrong believing. You understand? Because the agape love, regardless of what happens, what people do to you, doesn't, is not confrontational, doesn't seek its own way, doesn't want to fight, you understand? The agape love is a love that handcuffs itself to you. And that agape love has got the only key. So it will chase you down, it will pursue you. So even, and that's why, Humanly, it's impossible to love this way unless we allow our will to get out of the way. If our will is out of the way, we abandon our will. That's why Paul wrote that it's no longer I who live, but that Christ that lives in me. That's why he said, I rather have the thorn in my flesh to remind me that this flesh needs to be subjected, needs to be brought under subjection to the world because... We cannot love this way. And then when people hate you, are we going to hate them back? Because how will they know us? How will they know us if we are different? Solomon said that that agape love is the lily amongst the thorns. Now the world today represents the thorns. And the agape love should be us. In Song of Solomon 2 verse 2, you can go read it. The lily amongst the thorns. So we that has the agape love that has believed and accepted Jesus Christ. We are the lilies. So how can we then also be a thorn? Whenever somebody hates you, you reach out in love to them. Because love breaks down any barriers. The agape love, not the human love. Because the human love is always reciprocal. I'm going to love you, but you must love me this way. I'm going to love you on a Monday, but on a Tuesday, I can't love you. You understand what I'm saying? So we are talking about the, why is it so important? Why is it so important to know this love? That that was the second point, because how will they know us? The third point is then, the proof of abiding in God, resting in His love, because I'll get to that point now, because I want to speak about that point. The fourth point is to be filled with the fullness of God. How do we know when we are full, filled with the fullness of God? Hmm? How do we know? Because we have His love, we have His wisdom, and we have His power in us. That's the fullness of God. It's God's character. His image and His fullness. That's when we have this fullness, the fullness of God. Point number five, this agape love unites us. It unites us. It brings us together. It brings unity. Point number six, it is also a surety that we love God when we have this agape love. Because the word of God says, you shall know them by their fruit. So, it's a surety that we love God. Resting in this agape love. Resting. Because the word rest really means to remain in this agape love. It really means to abide in this agape love. It really means to stay firm in this agape love. You remember a a couple of weeks ago I spoke to you about faithfulness. So this agape love is a faithful love. It remains. It doesn't expire. That's why even if you backslide, this agape life doesn't backslide with you. It is forever married to you. And it will chase you down. 
until like the prodigal son, you come to your senses. Amen. Amen. So we've seen that faith plus hope gets us to the agape love. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, when we have come and we experience the agape love, the fullness, the fulfillment of the promise, the bridge, faith, now faith, hope, and love remains. Remains means stays. But the greatest of them all, love remains. So the hope is the bridge part. Because if we don't have the hope part, we cannot cross over to the fulfilling of the promise, which is the love. So this love, how do we keep and abide and sustain this love? How do we remain in this love? Because this love gives us the sustaining power mm. to overcome. When we get to that stage of the fulfillment of the promise, we have the fullness of Christ. Mm. <coughs> and when we get to the fullness of Christ, what does it mean? We have a renewed spirit. We have a renewed spirit. Now, a renewed spirit, what does a renewed spirit do? It, it leads to communion. It leads to fellowship. And it leads to friendship. Now, what is friendship? <laughs> I know what is the human friendship, but what is friendship? Friendship is the union of two worlds. You see, friendship is the union of two worlds. Friendship basically says that my world is connected to your world. So that's what God wants us to have. When, and I'll get to the example, that's why God called Abraham a friend of God. Because when our worlds are union, in unity with God's will, guess what will happen? God and myself, when we have this union, we will share intimate things. Mm -hmm. He will show me things to come. We will agree on things. And we will walk together. And we will have fellowship and communion with one another. Mm. That's what friendship, the biblical friendship means. Mm. When the two, when two wills, when there's a union of two wills. Mm. So, this union, when there's a union of these two, two wills, it leads to intimacy, isn't it? So, when we have, when, when we, and we'll go to the scripture now and we'll read the scripture, but when there's intimacy, there will always be fruitfulness. Mm. And you can, you can take it when a husband and a wife are intimate with one another, they conceive. Mm. And the fruit of that is the child that is born. Now, only God's Holy Spirit knows God's thoughts. Amen. Like I said. Now, when we have this union with God, it means that we are resting in His love. Because we are not in enmity. We don't have this fighting in us. So we are resting in His love. Now let's go to the scripture. I want to read the scripture. The scripture is in John 15. And I want to read it. And it's, and, it's, and it's really a chapter about resting mm. in God. Because God says, I am the vine. Huh? And we are the branches. So who is the, 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 the vineyard keeper? No, no, Jesus is the branch, the, 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 the vine. The branch is God. God is the branch keeper. You understand what I'm saying? This is the opposite of St. George's cricket grounds. 
Die gras daar so, die groundsman is Jesus, en die gras is ons. Kom, ek maak het simpel. Ok, let's read it. I'm going to go to John 15 verse 1. To say, well, I'm going to read the whole thing, but it's, it blessed me really. I am the true grapevine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit. And he prunes the branches that do bear fruit so that they will produce even more fruit. You have already been pruned and purified by the message that God gave me to you. It says, remain in me and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine. And you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Yes, I am the vine. You are the branches. Those who rest in my love and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. For apart from me, you can do nothing. So if you don't have this love, you can do nothing. If this agape love is not in us, us might as well know our planet, opak and babai. We can do nothing. That is the, the secret. Anyone who does not remain in my love is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. But if you remain in my love and my words remain and my words of love remain in you you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted when you produce much fruit you are my true disciples that brings glory to my father so what does it say when we produce fruit the father is glorified because that's how we please god amen, amen. my father is glorified i have loved you I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. Rest in my love. When you obey my commandments, you remain in my love. Just as I obeyed my Father's command commandments and I remain in His love. I have told you these things so that you will be filled with my joy. Now, can you see the word joy? Every time I want to pause, every time when you hear the word joy, it means a joining of two worlds that are in unity. Because when you say the joy of the Lord is my strength, it means the joining of God's word and His Holy Spirit is my strength. Every time when you hear the word joy, it's a joining of two worlds. God's will Word and His Holy Spirit. So that, my, so that, that you will be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. Yes, the joining of my Word and your Holy Spirit will overflow in your life. This is my commandment. Now, this is a commandment, this is an instruction. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. Love each other in the same way that I've loved you. There is no greater love than to lay one's life for one's friend. Underline the word friend. You are my friends. Say, I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you slaves because a master doesn't confide in his slaves. Now you are my friends. Since I have told you everything, the Father told me. So can you imagine everything that the Father has told His Son, His Son is now telling it to us. It's revealing it unto us because of His Holy Spirit. The secret things. That is when we abide and rest in this agape love. We have access to the secret things. That only the Holy Spirit knows. 
Now you are my friend since I have told you everything the Father told me. You didn't choose me. I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit. So that the Father will give you whatever you ask for using my name. And then verse 17 ends off like this. This is my command. Love each other. Love each other. Now, that scripture tells us about the resting in love. Take this, take this example of a, if you take a plant and you take the plant out of the soil. There is no union of two worlds there, isn't it? Because the plant can say, But the plant knows for it to produce fruit, it has to be in the soil. That's why we need to be in the vine. We need to be in the vine. We need to rest in the vine. And even if the winds and the dark seasons come, we mustn't unplug ourselves. Because ons, ons, ons unplug ourselves must buy a We unravel. And then we take the shortcut. Because we're saying, no, I can't rest. I can't abide in this. God says to us, abide in me. Abide in my love. I was telling other guy here last week, I said, you've got these nice things about kindness makes you love. But kindness will never work if it is not from the origin of love. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because the fruit of the Holy Spirit, uh -huh. the soil of that is love. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And if you don't have love, you'll, you'll be like a gong, like the Bible says, a, a, a noisy gong that makes noise. You can know scriptures from east to west to from north to south. But if you don't have love, if you don't have this agape love, we are nothing. God says we are nothing without it. And we need to examine ourselves. Do we, are we really abiding in this love? I measure myself always because I look at the fruit that I'm producing. Am I, I'm measuring myself and I'm saying to myself, okay, what fruit am I producing? Because an apple can only produce after an apple. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You understand? Yes. You will not find an orange on an apple tree. Yes, we produce fruit, but that's all the wrong types of fruit. Yes. We need to rest in this love. Abide in this love. It is the bloodline, the oxygen. Love is the atmosphere of the soil. Huh? Love is the atmosphere of the soil. Have you ever seen when there's love in a place, your plants grow? Eh? Have you ever seen? And, 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 and have you ever seen when there's love in a home, the people are free? Your kids are free. I said yesterday and, I, and, and to another guy, I said, we need to love our kids more. Because if we focus on all their wrongs, we don't have time to love them. Right. We don't have time. Yep. And let me tell you something. Eh? Well, love is our secret weapon. Mm -hmm. When we love people, eh? mm -hmm. people don't have a defense. Yes. They don't have a defense. Yes. The enemy says, hi, I did this to this guy. I did to this, but he still loves. Yeah. Huh? How do I? How can I answer to this? Because the more people hate us, the more we must love them. Yeah. The agape love must love through us, to them. Uh -huh. yeah. How is it going to be when we fight fire with fire? But we can only have this type of supernatural agape love when we abide in, when we rest in it. Mm. When we have union. When our union, our will and God's will is in union with one another. Mm. Hmm? Mm. And that is when we are intimate. When the plant, when the when the plant is intimate with the soil, it has to produce fruit. Yeah. There's no other way. It has to produce fruit. But God wants us to be intimate with Him. Yes, sir. God always we always hear people coming to God. But but for that, this is my prayer request. This may lay it on my But God just wants to be intimate. Mm -hmm. He says, you know what? Just come and, come and sit at my feet. 
I, I, I require, I request this from you so that we can just speak to one another, mm -hmm. uh, converse with one another. Yes, have, have, have we ever, ons bid altyd, nema, het, het jy al redig waar in een diep gesprek met die Heere geraak? Uh, when you just talk to God, en jy reveal dat, en die prees en worship was lekker vandag man, en jou prees en is so lekker, en, en, daar waar ek gaan, en, ek dink maar net altyd aan jou, en, um, ek ken jou en al my weer, weer Heere, en ek weet jy sal, jy sal al wees van my man, maar hoe gaan dit vandag? Huh? Sê my net bykie man, ek wil net weet, ey, ek mis jou, ek weet jy mis ons altyd man, Heere, ek is lief jou, more than anything I love you, that's how you communicate and you just have an awesome time in the presence of God, and that you're abiding in God, abiding in his love, because when you abide in that love, you know what, it's so easy to give this love, it's so easy to love people, because you must remember, our eyes are fallen, Nah. Our human love, we are, even though the agape love comes into our life when we say yes, we still have a human love. Yes, sir. And like I said, when we leave that human love unattended, mm. not being addressed by the word of God, it will become more the human love. We'll become cold. That's why you've seen people have grown cold. Yes. Huh? When you started out with people, they were joyful people. Mm. But because of bitterness, trials and tribulations, people's hearts have be become cold. Yes. Yes. They've become cold. Even our hearts to God has become yes, cold, sir. people. Yes, yes, because, Heere, wanna gaan die einde? Uh -huh. When is uh -huh. it going to end? Yes, uh -huh. When is this night season uh -huh. finally going to be over? Yeah. But in the midst of it, everything, God is faithful. When we just abide His love, when we want to know His love, no, he's like that, that love sustains us. Mm. Nobody loves us like God. Yep. I don't care. I have always wondered why does mothers love their children that way? Mm. And I could never understand. Die kind is in die tronken. Die kind is wat, maar die moeder sy liefde verreiken. Die het net een glimps wat ek gekreed het. Hoe denk, denk jy, how much more does God love us like that? Yes. More than that. Huh? More. Because God, there's no negative wrong thoughts in God. God only thinks the best about us. Yeah. And that's when we you, abide in this love, when we, yes. when we are intimate with God. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Hmm? When we are so intimate with God, God shows us the secret things. The secret things. Because a lot of times people will wonder, but how did you know that? How did Daniel, how could Daniel prophesy? Huh? How could Joseph foretold that there was going to be seven mar yara? How? Because that's when you in the secret place of the Most High. Mm. That's why Psalm 91 says, when we dwell in the secret place yes. of the Most High, mm. that he gives us revelationary, revelatory knowledge. Mm. Revelation the secret things that only His Spirit will reveal unto yes. us. Yes. That's why I said, when we operate in the Spirit, the future get comes to now. Mm -hmm. Because we can shape our own destiny. Yeah. We can rewrite our own history. Yes. Moving forward, when we walk in the Spirit, mm -hmm. when we understand the power of the Spirit. I just want to highlight something for you that's so significant. And I, and, I, and, I, and I want to read this quickly because it says basically there's another scripture and I, and I, and I don't want to go and read it now but it just says that in 1 John 3 verse 14 it says that uh, if you don't abide, if you don't rest in this love mm. then it means you are dying. Mm. Well, let me read it to you. 1 John 3 verse 14 If we love our brothers and sisters who are believers it proves that we have passed from death to life. But the person who has no love is still dead. So it means that when we don't abide in this love, we are slowly dying. Because this love, when we are rest in His love and understand His love, gives us life. But if we don't love, 
your the next person our neighbor we can as we can write our epitaph already because we are di- we are dead we are dying but here's the example in closing now quickly that i want to highlight for you is that's why that's why god could call abram my friend huh? i've always wondered and when we started the, when we wrote the song i know a friend and 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 you know what and a, as i said to you i'm studying and god show, shows me revelatory things and now i understand why god called abram a friend of god it's the same when adam was in the garden when 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 god called out to adam adam where are you god wasn't trying to find fault in him god what though god uh, didn't try to 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 catch him out god was calling unto the friendship god was calling unto the friendship god was still extending his hand in the midst of everything that adam did in the garden now god walked with adam in the garden every day and what did they share they shared intricate things huh they shared things god told adam okay muni fa nai dinges eet nie ja or ek agree alles that is what friendship means huh when 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 adam and god agreed but then what happened we all know adam fell into sin but fast forward abraham hmm why was abraham called a friend of god because abraham's will was tied to god's will huh he had union with god that's why god could tell him anything take your take your stuff and go to this land where i'm going he didn't disagree because he was walking with god in the spiritual realm he understood god's character that whatever god tells him to do god will not lead him into a bush or something like that that's why it was accounted unto him as righteousness in righteousness means the right standing with god so that's why abram was called a friend of god moses went to the mountain and then an experience with god so god face to face now when we spend time with god moses's face was full of the glory people couldn't look at moses when he came down the mountain now that's the time when we spend time with god and we intimate with god our face shines with glory the radiance and the beauty and the majesty of jesus christ because of this love that we are abiding in and we are having intimacy with huh and we are glowing Amen. i don't know about you but i also want to be i'm 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 a friend of god i'm a friend of god and i i want to remain <laughs> i want to rest in that friendship huh i want to rest in that friendship all the days of my life Abraham was asked to go and offer up Isaac. Huh? Now, if somebody didn't know somebody well, do you think that person will go and take his son to be offered up? That's why God can could, could call him a friend of God because he, they the two of each other the two of them knew each other very well. That's what God is telling us people. that he is trustworthy he is reliable yes sir he is dependable whatever we are going through he wants us to have an intimate relationship with him so that we can understand what he is telling us in our dark seasons what the holy spirit is revealing unto us that he that we might be going through a storm now but he's keeping us away from a catastrophe that's right huh because God has only good things for us in store. Yes sir. And we must start believing that. Amen. His abiding love, his resting love in us is a good love. It's a fulfilled promise. And that's why ask yourself in the days and the weeks to come. I also want to be a friend of you God. 
Huh? I also want to be a friend. Let us, I'm going, I'm going to take my will and I'm going to abandon it and I'm going to tie my will with your will. And I'm going to have union and there's going to be unity. That's why Psalm 133 says, Behold and see how pleasant it is for brothers and sisters to dwell together in unity, in union, in union. When their worlds, their brothers and the sisters' worlds are united with God's will. Because where there's unity, the blessing is. The fulfilled promise is. The agape love is. Amen. Proverbs 22 verse 11, it says, Whoever loves a pure heart and gracious speech will have the king as a friend. Yo, yo, yo. Whoever has a pure heart and a gracious speech. You, you remember what I said to you a couple of weeks ago? Your heart and the, your, the speech. Because God's word and his Holy Spirit produces truth. So whatever is in the heart will come out in speech. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And out of the heart flows the issues of life. Now, when our heart and our speech lines up with God's will, we become the friend of the king. Now, don't you want to be a friend of the king? Yes. Huh? The king of kings yes. and the lord of lords. I just want to say we have to stay in, remain in, and rest in God's love. Yes. It's the only way to achieve the union of two worlds. When we stay, remain, and rest, only God's Holy Spirit can guide us and lead us into all truth. Mm. Let's stand this morning. Let's close our eyes. This morning I want to specifically speak to people that is not saved. I, I, I know that a lot of people that are sitting here are believers, but there are some of you that sit here that I feel and I've been, I've been ancient in my spirit for this past weeks. And whoever you are, and if you are backslidden even, if you've said yes to Jesus long time ago and your heart has grown cold, and you need to come back because Jesus is knocking at the door of your heart. Do not lose this opportunity, people. I am not going to be disobedient to God and the Holy Spirit, but I, I, I've been led by the Holy Spirit to, to make the salvation call. Those of you who don't know Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, do not waste time. Do not put it off any further. Do not run away from God. Run to God. He will put a robe on you. He'll put a ring on your finger and sandals on your feet. Like the prodigal son that lost his way and went and have a riot and had a riotous living. God is calling you back today. He says, come all those who are heavy laden and are heavy burdened. I will give you rest. Take my yoke. My yoke is easy to carry. Take my yoke for it is light and I will give you rest. There is no way other than the way of Jesus. Jesus is the only way. Jesus is the only truth. And Jesus, Jesus is the only life. Come to Jesus today. I know that there are people here today that needs to make that decision. That decision is, is knocking on your heart. Do not put it off. Do not put it off any minute, any day longer. With all eyes closed right now and heads bowed. I want to pray for you personally. I'm not going to do a corporate prayer. I want to pray for you corporately, I mean personally, 
And I want you, those of you who don't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, please raise your hands right now. I am not going to embarrass you. We are going to lead you to the way that is higher than our ways. We are going to lead you to Jesus this morning. Raise your hands. And when you raise your hands, come to the front. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you this morning. I know there's, the, Jesus is not an auction this morning. Jesus is not an auction. Your salvation is at stake. Your salvation is at stake. Come forward because Jesus is knocking at the door of your heart. And he wants to come in and supper with you. Come, come, come forward those who need Jesus this morning. I know there's still a couple of people that need to come forward. And I am not, I, I'm going to be obedient to the spirit of the most high God. I don't care how much time we take. But there's, there's people here that are still mulling. Don't mull over it. Make the decision today to say, Jesus, I need you in my life. I need you in my life, Jesus. I can't do it without you. You are my refuge and my strength, Jesus. You are my strong tower. I need you today. I need you today. I need you today. There's still a one, there's one person, there's one person. There's one person, I feel it in my spirit. I feel it in my spirit today. There's one person that needs to come forward and to commit their life. Jesus is knocking at the door of your heart. We read the word in John 15 verse 7. If we are not in Jesus, we are like dead branches. We are like dead branches. If tomorrow... You are no longer here. Can you, can, can you truly say that I am going to be with Jesus? If tomorrow something happens and God calls you home, where, which home are you going to if you don't know Jesus? Can you make that call to say today that I'm okay? You cannot put salvation off. Salvation is now. Faith is now. Faith is now. Don't put it off, people. Don't put it off. Don't put it off. There's a gentleman here today. He's been struggling. He's been struggling to, 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 to trust God. Because that trust is built on your faith. And if you don't have enough faith, that it means that you haven't truly given your life over to Jesus. There's a gentleman this morning. Come forward. Come forward. God is knocking at the door of your heart and says, Come and complete the process. Come and complete the process. Let me complete it. Let me complete it. Let me show you. Let me show you how good and how great I am. Taste and see the greatness and the goodness of Jesus. Jesus is not an auction, people. We can't play. We are in a fight. We are in a fight. And we need to fight this good fight of faith. Hallelujah. Our fight is not uh, uh, physical. Our fight is spiritual. And we can only win this fight when we say yes to Jesus. When we give our hearts, our mind, body and soul completely to Jesus. With all eyes closed this morning and heads bowed, I want you to say this out aloud. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you just as I am. Lord Jesus, I confess that I'm a sinner and that I have run away from you. Lord Jesus, I come to you right now. Save me. Make my life brand new. Come and live in my heart. Come and dwell in me. I confess you, Lord Jesus, as my Lord, as my Savior, as my King, as my Lord of Lords. I now receive you, Lord Jesus. 
is my supreme king. I am now born again. I am a child of the most high God. Thank you that I'm washed by your blood. That I'm cleansed by your blood. Thank you that I am now a new creature in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving me. Let's rejoice. Amen and amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. With all eyes still closed, Father God, we thank you so much for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you, Father God, for your word once again that teaches us, cleanses us, empowers us, and renews us. Father, we are so grateful. Thank you that heaven is rejoicing this morning, Father God, for more souls that has come into the kingdom. And we know, Father God, that more will be added daily as we give you the praise, as we give you the glory, and as we give you all the honor. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the sweet Holy Spirit abide and be with us today. Father, may you cause your face to shine upon us and be gracious towards us. May you lift up your countenance towards us to bless us and to give us peace. Blessings and honor, glory and power belong to you alone, Father God. Father God, we thank you for hearing our prayers today and we thank you for answering our prayers. As we, your beloved people, right now covenant with you to bring you the praise, the glory and all the honor, we ask and pray this in the majestic name of all names. Jesus Christ, the way, Jesus Christ, the truth and Jesus Christ, the life. With much thanksgiving and all God's people agree and said... Amen. Amen. Let's give Jesus a hand of praise. Greetings, beloved brothers and sisters in Christ. Yes, today we are coming live to you, Ecclesia Ministries, from 450 on Decker's Road. We are continuing today on the topic, Hope, the Anchor for Our Souls. Our key scriptures today is John uh, 15 1 verse 7 and also Proverbs 22 verse 11 we are talking about God's abiding love the agape love what is this agape love the agape love is a supernatural love that we need to remain in rest in and also stay fixed in because this agape love enables us to love God and to love our neighbors God tells us that through a renewed spirit we spoke about faith, hope, and love. Now, when we get to love, love is the fulfillment of the promise. And a renewed spirit is when we have that renewed uh, fulfillment of the love that God gives us, the agape love. And friendship is the union of two worlds, my will and God's will coming together. It's the same like God's Holy Spirit and God's Word working together to produce truth. So friendship is actually the intimacy that God requires of us to have with Him. You know, we come to God just asking Him for results, but God wants us to have intimate relationship with Him, conversation. I'm reminded of the example in Abraham. That's why Abraham was called a friend of God, because Abraham knew the character of God. He understood God's intricate things. And God wants us to be His friend because so that His Holy Spirit can share with us deep and secret things. His Holy Spirit can reveal to us things that are need to, that need to come. So in the days and the weeks to come, beloved brothers and sisters, can you really call yourself a friend of God? Be blessed and stay tuned next week as we come to you from Ecclesia Ministries. In Jesus' name, Amen. <laughs>